This conference will now be recorded. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 9.41 p.m. Not intentionally delayed, but somewhat delayed tonight uh, due to uh, getting uh, dog and cat food. Not a topic I want to discuss, but uh, I had to drive a little bit longer to get their special brand stuff that they get. So sorry about that. On that note, this is our Wednesday. This is a very critical uh, midweek strategic webinar. These sessions are recorded, uploaded to Clueless Day Trading YouTube channel for everyone to review at their own time. Full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for solicitation or advice. So welcome. So what are we gonna talk about tonight? We're just gonna look at things that we talked about on the last webinar, which was on Sunday, the weekend webinar, and everything that I talked about happened and is happening. And that's the God honest truth. Okay, exactly what I said the markets would do, what levels they're gonna to go to. We're gonna look at those charts and those charts are at your disposal on the real-time Twitter feed. That's exactly where they went. Then we had a late day sell-off and now they're rising higher. Every technical pattern that I described from the lows from Thursday and Friday have come to fruition. There have been great winners. We're gonna look at some of those charts. And some of the greatest winners have been not large cap stocks, but small cap stocks, such as Canada Goose, such as Blink, such as GameStop, even though it pulled back a little bit today, such as Sonos, and then a selection of other stocks that also went higher. On that note, welcome. Hopefully all of you are connected. And Paul, can you hear us now? Okay, maybe he doesn't. What is it? Mic not working, so don't talk to Paul, laughing out loud. Okay, got it. Okay, I had to switch to another screen to look at that. Okay, fine. So, that's great. So, try to keep this simple. I always promise myself I want to keep this webinar short and sweet, straight to the point, which I do. But then there's so many things to cover, so we always go overboard. But this tonight, I'd like not to go overboard. All right? Anyone new who's listening to this, this is what we do. Look at this chart. It is a thing of beauty, a term that Paul used on um, the NASDAQ chart. Because he texts me and DMs me, and we're good friends, and we talk all the time. Okay? Well, I ain't that bullish. I am technically bullish. And from a technical bullish standpoint, this chart is gorgeous. Matt, are you there? Yes. Good. What's happening on this chart right now? This is a real live e mini S&P index futures chart. What is happening right now? What is the chart doing with the candles? And this arrow, by the way, this green arrow, I don't put it there. That's automatically generated by think or swim scripts. My structured charts are a different story. But I'm going to explain to you what is happening right now. But I want to get some feedback from smart people like Matt, Mike, Paul, Ray, and whoever else is going to come in or listen to it later. So what's happening here, Matt? It looks like the candle is um right a, right in between the looks like the five um sma uh no and the wrong. 20. wrong it's beyond the five sma the five sma is the yellow chart yellow line it is breaking out over the red line what is the red line matt this is how you make fu money which we did today, uh, by the way. The 34? Oh, Jesus. Matt, I don't expect that from you. You're way too smart for that. 
I hold you in great esteem. Okay? Why don't you write it down somewhere? The red line is always the 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average. What is the orange line? What is the orange line? I've said this like 900 zillion times. If you guys don't get it, then you guys are not making the big money. What is the orange line? What is the orange line, guys? 34. Thank you very much. Why don't you write it down somewhere? The yellow line, because these lines matter, uh, in, incorporated with the structures and all that stuff. Moving averages matter. This script that Think or Swim runs, this green arrow didn't just come from nowhere because they triggered a buy. Not that I care about, but they triggered a buy. The red line is a 50-day moving average. What is the blue line that is starting to curve up? What is the blue line, Ray? 20 day. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. This line here. Well, that's a uh, uh, automated line from uh, Thinkorswim. They kind of put it out there. So forget about that. 20 day, 50 day, 34 day. Get used to it. If you're going to be in my service, get used to technical stuff. Please, please, for your own sake, not for mine. Like I always said, the weak hands will always fall off. Let them fall off. We have had so many winners till the uh, last afternoon drop. And then now it's taking it all back with futures up 20 points. 19 points right now running running higher so the weak minds who sold at the bottom instead of buying it like i said are going to not receive the fruits of their hard work and labor tomorrow morning because mitch mcconnell and nancy pelosi and mnuchin i love mnuchin smartest new york cookie ever he should be president if you ask me Okay. We're disagreeing about the stimulus bill. The stimulus bill is almost done. They're preparing the sausage. That's what it's called in Washington, D.C. Okay. So any of you who panicked and sold instead of buying or selling when the markets were up 500 points where I said sell full or partial profits and we took some nice profits and moved the strikes up on a bunch of different things. Well, you are not managing your positions right. Tonight, I'm not going to ask questions who bought, who didn't. That's your problem, not mine. I'm just trying to help and help very hard. But the more you guys learn from what I'm doing, and what I'm saying in the end game, in the end game will make you wealthier. So it's yes, exactly. This line here, I even put it out there, 3420. That's where we're going to land up. Of course, there'll be volatility intraday on the 15 minute, one hour and short term back and forth. But this is where we're going. And if we can breach that, God help us, because then we're gonna hit 3488, we're gonna hit 3500, and I'm not gonna get that bullish like Paul does sometime, and go say, oh, we're gonna to go to 3600. I say that within the next couple of days, which I explained very clearly, the day count on my last webinar that you guys were on, where the markets will hit the peak at what date? You guys remember that, right? Well, I promised myself I shouldn't ask questions, so I won't waste my time. I will not ask questions. Why don't you just listen to the uh, previous webinar? 3,400 is a done deal. Right there. 
3425 is where we were, we're going to go to unless no stimulus bill or something really crappy happens. I told you on the Sunday webinar that this frigging com uh, comical debate between President Trump and uh, uh, Joe Biden is not going to give, the markets don't give a crap. Did the markets give a crap after the debate today? Matt, did the markets give a crap today after the debates last night? No. Exactly. We were up 512 points. Wall Street doesn't give a hoot. You know why? Because Democrats are Republicans. Short term, there'll be fluctuations. In the end game, as long as you don't screw around with American business, markets are going to go higher. Maybe some of you are too young, too naive, too dogmatic with your political affiliations. I'm just not going to try to change your mind. The markets don't give a crap. I worked on Wall Street for 14 years. I should know. Under Obama, the markets went up a gazillion percent. Under Trump, when he came in, the markets <coughs> accelerated higher. Under Clinton, the markets had bull markets. So who the F cares? Exactly. So when you listen to those dogmatic newsletters, your other trading services, the markets are going to be held in the handbasket because Biden's going to win. It's all bullshit. Initially, they'll drop. A little bit. And it'll be all in my tactical chart. Then it's going to surge. That's just the way it goes in America. Okay? So, so far, this is a beautiful chart. We have internals flying. Look at that. Are we overbought? No. We have more room to go. Where are the MACDs? The MACDs are just crossing over right there, right there. Can you guys focus on the lines, please? Can you put your reading glasses on, your computer glasses? What's happening here? The first green candle, the first green candle on the histograms. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see that? Yes. That means money in your pocket. If you bought SPY calls a couple of days ago, last week, and even today at the close. Look at that baby. It's just crossing over. Do you think the MACDs care about Biden or Trump? I don't think so. They care about the momentum in the markets and a lot of things that are, matter to American business. And this is beautiful. Focus. Be a visual trader. That's all I got to say. That's all I got to say. Because everything that I talked about last week and on Sunday is coming true. And anyone want to say, anyone of you want to say like, hey, no, it's not. Well, tell me. Because I'm going to show you that to you right now. So. Net net, this is the daily chart. We are looking at 3422, maybe by Friday. That's a lot of money in your pocket. That's another 250% on the spike call. Next. I'm setting up the charts for you right now because they're all preset. I don't make up charts after the fact, I make up charts before it happens, as you all know. Let's look at the short-term picture. The short-term picture, the ES15 for day traders primarily. What happened? This happened. We're moving up nice. We broke out and then right at 2.15, the markets decide to have a pullback. We are taking almost all of it back right now. Why did the markets have a pullback at 215? Guys, I say the same thing. I don't have all night for you guys. I'm working hard. Why did the markets pull back at 215? And you don't even have to like know the answer because I already put it up there. 
McConnell. Exactly, McConnell. And what did what is McConnell? You see, don't give me half ass like McConnell. What did McConnell say? There's no agreement on the stimulus talk. Yeah, he kind of like poured some cold water on the stimulus talks, right? And all of you like knew or didn't know or decided to keep silent, like, okay, that's great. Um, all right. Exactly. But more importantly, from a technical standpoint, the markets pulled back because we got overbought. We got overbought on the on the 15 minute charts. Right there. And right there, McConnell comes in. You think McConnell's watching my charts? I don't think so. But the markets are watching McConnell and Pelosi and Mnuchin. But nothing really changed. Because the overall picture, if you look at the uh, broader view, is intact. Beautiful double bottom, inverse head and shoulder, cup and handle. And now we're going higher. We're up 19 points on the S&P. So what happened? McConnell is uh, tweeting out at the, he doesn't tweet, um, at uh, at uh, 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 nine in the evening saying, no, uh, everything's good. I'm actually uh, having dinner with Pelosi. No, that's just the markets doing what they're doing. This is where I think we're going to land up. Like I said before, 3420, and that's where the confluence of all these different technical lines are. This rising wedge. All of them are saying one thing. Put your two hands together like an angle. Come on, do it right now, guys. Come on, do it, do it, okay? Do it. Put your two hands, put it together in a triangle. That's where we are, right? That's where we're going to go. That's where we're going to go, 3420. That's a lot of money on a pocket. Matt, do a quick calculation, 3371. 3420. How many points is that on the Dow? Because the rest of you are a little bit slow. 3772 and 3419 or 3420. How many points is that on the Dow? About 390. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for helping me out. 380 to 390 points we have a shot to do it did you guys all hear that remember yes. if, you want, if you all want to be options traders you got to be quick on the numbers this ain't watching a football game this ain't being at a trump rally okay this waving your hats and like screaming and shouting this is about numbers. This is about brains. Use your brains. That's what God has given you. Use your $1 calculators or your fancy $50 HP calculator. For God's sakes, I'm trying to teach you guys that I still don't get a response other than Matt or a few other people who answer right away. What's wrong with you guys? I love you all, but seriously, you're so slow at answering simple numerical questions. No wonder, like I always say, we are the 40th or 37th in the world in math in the United States. And we're supposed to be the smartest. You want to make America great again? Make America smart again. STEM education. We can't even do simple percentages. Oof. Frustrating sometimes. Okay, next chart. Next chart. Let's look out a little bit more. Let's zoom out a little bit. Thank you, Matt. Imagine if I was a real technical genius, which I'm not. I'm not a fake one either, but I'm a pretty smart one. What if I was asking you like some serious like derivative calculus questions? Oh, imagine those answers. <laughs> different? Yeah, go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I'm using a different mic. I'm glad you can hear me. Uh, I was just wondering, you know, and going let back me, to let me, let me Let me just yeah. tell you one thing before you go any further. I do not want you to be too bullish. That's all. Okay. Yeah, I'm dead okay. serious. Go ahead. You read my mind. Uh, well, I, I just wanted to know. 
I just wanted to know what if we do get, you know, what if things start moving fast? Uh, they delayed the, the vote in the House because they're obviously amending it to make it more Republican friendly or coming meeting in the middle. What if we do get a strong signal? And of course, the market's always going to look forward and bake it in right away. What if it looks really certain that we're going to get this stimulus deal? I, I, I think we can break that 30 for 20 level. OK, so right there on this chart, that's a very good uh, statement. So right there in this chart, I'm showing you where we can go to. We're going to go to 34.46. These are the sh uh, short to intermediate term charts. We're going to go exactly. We're going to hit this original neckline of the of 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 the top uh, uh, line of the cup from um, the 8th of September. 34.46. Matt, do your quick math. 33 where we are right now 3372 to 3446 how many points on the dow is that and somebody else too given that we are so educated americans come on guys 590 so let's call it 600 thank you matt okay dow jones 600 points that's the max we'll get in my opinion, on a stimulus bill. Short term, short term, going into the day count that I gave you guys last week on the first eight trading days of October. That's your answer, Paul, okay? 600 points is the best you're gonna get. And that's a lot for individual stocks. Yeah, that's perfect. And uh, the, the MACD still looks pretty low, even if it goes there, I think, uh, on the daily. I am just run. giving you the day yeah. count, and now we're yeah. going to look at the MACD, which I agree with you, on the daily. So the daily will give us a much bigger picture. And by the way, these charts are all put in there with comments and everything on my real-time Twitter feed. The only reason I do these webinars is to, to pinpoint people on focusing on them. That's all. That's all. Because that's my job. So I'm doing my job. Question is, are you doing yours? That's all I ask. I am certainly not super bullish. I am certainly not bearish. That's for a fact. But please, and I'm not talking to Paul, but in general, please do not be super bullish. Play be tactically bullish. And the best returns have come from small cap stocks, which is the next screens we'll look at. Hundreds of percent that some of you don't even bother looking at because what they're not worthy of it <laughs> all of you are looking at the same stuff apple up two dollars uh, yawn netflix up seven yawn facebook up one yawn amazon up 17 yawn i'm talking like percentages 0.54 google up yawn goose up 10 percent whoa Calls went up 248%. Canada goose. Walmart even. Boom, moonshot. After it broke out of the of, of the hockey stick formation. Stink outside the box. Stop looking just at the big cap star text for God's sake. I've been saying that for weeks now. Let's look at the longer, uh, let's go uh, go back to the market. This is the daily. It's a real live after hours, futures up 18.50, call it 19. This is what's happening. We are finally, we are finally over the 50 day moving average, the red line right there. So what's the best we can get? 34.30, upper Bollinger, 34.56. Matt, my right-hand wingman, please tell me, if we can get up to 34.30, how many points on the Dow is that? From where we are right now, which is 33.69. A 4.90. Thank you so much, man. You make my life so much easier. Sorry to God. Um, so, okay, so from here to 3,400, actually, uh, 
give me 3,400 first. On the Dow Jones, I'm going to put DJ. Two fifty. Two fifty. Okay. And uh, if we can manage to break above that, it's never going to happen in a straight line. Believe me. Um, if we manage to break above that and get to where the big supply zone is, this big supply. This is the big sell programs right there. If we get there, you said four ninety, Matt, right? Yeah. Thank you, Matt. What state are you located? Uh, New Jersey. Jeez, man, you're my neighbor. Holy cow. <laughs> what part of Jersey? Uh, North. Huh? North, North Jersey? Jersey? Which around what town? Uh, Clifton. Oh, no shit, man. That's uh, great. You're almost like a border of New York, right? Yeah, close enough. Good, man. We're going to meet soon. Great guy. All right. Um, all right, 490. You guys hear that? Okay. And if we get to the upper Bollinger, give me a number, Matt, please. On 34, give me a number on 3454 if we can get there from where we are right now. <clears throat> 660. Okay. So now you guys have exact numbers on print, no fake stuff. Okay. Right there. So that's a really bullish point right there. Forget about this part. That's a question mark for now. So these are the numbers that we're working on. So what are the chances? What are the probabilities? Because that's what we do as tactical traders. What are the probabilities instead of hoping and feeling like, oh, my God, everything's going to be okay? Life is not about everything's going to be okay. Life is all about risk. If you think life is hard, then everything you do is going to be easy. My dad used to say that. God bless his soul. All right? So trading is hard. So don't get happy. Trust me. Don't. Don't. Because anybody who went like nuts, didn't take profits in, in the beginning, slice in and out, then when the markets dropped hard, which they did, because of the Mnuchin, uh, uh, because of Mark Meadows and Mnuchin and stuff, Mentioning that, okay, we're so far apart, blah, blah, blah. We lost a lot of money. I know, traders. Don't feel happy. Be very vigilant. Be a little scared. Take tactical profits. And that's what I try to guide you guys all day long on the Twitter feed. You know that. I'm just telling you what I do. And I still came out nicely healthy, even though I gave back. A bunch, but I bought the lows, which I'm going to be very happy with tomorrow if the markets open up here. Okay, so what's happening on the daily? We're still moving up. We're not overbought and everything looks good here. What is the most dynamic part of what I talked about? Is this. Is this the MACD crossover. This is serious stuff. We have gone into the green on the histograms and we have a crossover on the stoves on the 1226 percentage K percentage D. Look at that. This is a beauty. But what would be a real beauty is when the red line turns higher and this goes higher. Once we get one of those, then we can say, hey, we're going to hit 3430. And thanks, Matt, for uh, uh, mentioning uh, uh, translating the numbers, calculating numbers. Then we can break out over here. But please, till that stuff happens on the daily, and there is no guarantee. Don't, 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 don't start to feel comfortable. In fact, never feel comfortable if you're trading. Are we good with that? What I just said. Yes. Yep. Yes. Of course, it's a yes. I know it's a yes. So everything is looking good here. Big volume here. What, what are we looking at on the weekly? Let me see. The weekly is still telling us, hey, exactly what I told you five minutes ago, two minutes ago. Don't get too like cushy. Has the weekly bottom? Has the weekly bottom? When you look at the stoves on the weekly chart on the overall market, 
well, the broader market, the S&P 500. Does this look like it's something you want to buy with all hands down? I'm going to ask each one of you. Matt. No. Excellent. Mike. Nope. Exactly. Uh, Paul. It's getting there, but not yet. Getting there? It's not even getting there. Getting there is getting to 20, getting to 15. If you really want to go all hands down, please don't take me the wrong way. I'm a straight shooter, okay? It's not getting there because if it falls to 20 and 15, we're down 800 points or 1,000. It's not getting there yet. And we have a negative divergence on the MACDs. Guys, I am a tactical bull. I am not an emotional bull. That's the reason I tend to take profits a little bit quicker. I need to move fast. And the biggest money is being made in small caps. That is the next screen we're going to look at. What is happening on the MACD? If you really want to be real, not fake. It is diverging. It's a negative divergence. And it is about to go red on the weekly. That completely matches with what I told you guys repeatedly on my past webinars. We're going to have a short-term rally and then mid-October, bang, down. So if you have a lot of money, of course, keep on buying into November and December. But I have no frigging idea what's going to happen then. Because this election is going to be a complete mess. So do you really want to be in a complete mess as an options trader or even as a stock trader? And if you have a lot of big stock positions, then in that case, uh, uh, protect yourself. Buy some hedges, shorts on the indices, or sell some covered calls. Are you guys understanding what I am speaking to you in English? Yep. Exactly. Keep your options close to your vest because the weekly is no bueno. And I said that and it matches exactly with my forecast. When the weekly gets down here, like we did back on March 23rd, buy with all hands down, eyes closed, in my opinion. That's when you can go in deep and say, all right, sit, I'm sitting long for weeks. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. In, uh, external charts on the weekly, by the way, don't look bad at all. They hit, the, it, they're going up. Um, this is a, um, remember, externals are externals. That's what your face looks like in the morning. What your body is inside, whether you're really sick or not, are the internals. And I just explained that to you. Okay? So, pen. We have a nice, if you want to look at it as a cup and a handle, it's a bull flag. And it's breaking out. But it ain't going to break out all the way down here. There's a lot of things put in place. You know what's going to make the markets go up to new highs? It ain't the stimulus bill. Can somebody think outside the box that I want you guys to think? That's why I push you guys so hard. What's going to make the markets? What are the fastest growth drivers in the market? Which sector? Technology. Which, thank you very much. What is holding back technology right now? Uh, the big tech. Uh, legal that's the, that's regulation that's not an answer no it's not government's always attacking whether it's the democrats whether it's the trump republicans they're always attacking our greatest companies they're a bunch of frigging morons that's what put them in power what makes america great I know you guys have heard that a dozen times million times american companies who are the biggest Kahunas, the biggest ballers in the world, the tech companies. And yet they're the ones getting attacked by uh, what's the fat ass's name? Uh, 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 um, Attorney General Barr. 
you know, who looks like Yogi Bear, right? Oh, we're going to attack Facebook. Oh, we're going to attack Google. We're going to attack Apple. Antitrust, antitrust. What are they trying to do? Let's go back to the Stone Age, all right? Our best companies are always attacked by our governments, and I don't care which government it is. And I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. And I've said that a zillion times. So that's one point. What is the other thing that's really holding tech back? Where is the most of our technology? Where is where are they getting a lot of their money from? Guys, think outside the box and give Matt a break and answer, please. Okay, I, I can't deal with the silence. Simon, wake up and answer. From the hedge funds rebalancing? Bullshit. China! This whole Chinese tech war that we initiated. And China itself is a partly to blame. Is causing a lot of our tech companies from being at huge premiums. This whole fight with TikTok, which is a freaking joke. TikTok America has nothing to do with security issues. Even the just even uh, the federal judges ruled against that, against the ban. You guys think, 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 think. I want you to be such great thinkers that you can teach me. I want to be taught, by the way. I'm tired of teaching. Think. This whole China-US tech cold war is putting a crimp on our greatest tech companies because they are being constricted from selling there. And China has their own unreliable entity list, which means like, hey, we're going to attack you if you attack us. So far, they've actually not done much, given, the, uh, given that we're attacking their biggest semiconductor company, something called SC, SSIC or something. They're actually being kind of holding back, like Trump said yesterday, which I thought was the stupidest statement, you know, on the Proud Boys and the Boogaloo Boys, a bunch of frigging extremists, you know, just like the Antifa hardcore guys. Stand back and stand by. I said, what the fuck is that statement? Stand by. Stand by for what? To shoot everybody? I swear to God. Seriously. Very disappointing sometimes, and Donald. Okay. That's your problem, not mine. So my point is, um, that's what's holding a lot of tech back. If we had some sort of ne negotiated settlement with china okay we're going to put this imposition on you but you can do this tech is going to go through the fucking roof you got it guys did you guys get it what i just said yes yep exactly this is ain't the boogaloo boys and the proud boys bunch of fat ass you know guys with big guns you think they'll make america great again what makes america great again is technology companies and their leaders who come from all different parts of the world, who believe in America, who love America, who want to make America truly great. Instead of a couple of fat ass, you know, guys and a couple of other left wing Antifa guys burning stores and everything that immigrants own. Like, yeah, that's going to make America great again. They're both assholes, in my opinion. All right. End of story. That's my, you know, that's my feeling about this whole bullshit. Yeah, carry a fat gun and then you're going to be great. Yes, yes, that's really smart, man. Why don't you fucking pay your taxes? I'm not talking about right. Trump. Get to the point. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a point about, you know, sometimes we look at the uh, the uh, McClendon oscillator and the Nazi. Um, the McClendon oscillator doesn't look like it has that much room left, but the Nazi has completely bottomed and so it, it totally aligns with what you just said about tech about to take off the nasty looks completely oversold right now i'm totally with you i'll pull that chart out in a minute uh but let me just go over a couple of small uh, uh, uh small caps which are making us shit loads of money and then most of you are not in it okay so yeah, yeah I, I i agree with what you're saying okay so uh let me just uh get to the point here <laughs> Okay, 
So here's something um, that I would say good a 90% of you never do and you never make the FU money because you think, hey, if he, I don't buy Tesla or NVIDIA or Apple or Facebook, I'm never going to make money. Well, you're wrong. You're dead wrong because this baby, I told you guys to buy it. Let's look at the daily. Canada Goose, which is just breaking out, by the way, just breaking out. And finally, one analyst came comes out from Cantor Fisher, I believe, I forget. So, okay, it's a $36 price target. What the heck was the guy at 22 when I was telling you guys to buy it at 25, at 22? I've been asking you guys to buy the stock since September. September, this is September, darling. All right, like we say in England. Hello, darling, told you to buy it in September. So in September, the stock was 25. It is hitting 33. I don't have time here to show the options charts because that's only on the Twitter feed and I'm going to put that on my Instagram, which some of you don't even go click or follow, which is kind of insulting to me, if you ask me. It is kind of insulting. Not that I you know, I'm not complaining about it, but seriously. I make you, uh, some of you guys a lot of money and you don't have the decency or the courtesy to just go on the Instagram channel and even if it's on Instagram, just create one. You should have one if you want to live in, the, in this uh, uh, modern age. And just hit like. That's all you need to do. And the fact that I don't see that, this, you know, I'm a straight, I'm a tough guy. So I'm just telling you straight out. That is very insulting. Very insulting to Pluto State Trading that you don't do that. Many of you don't do that. Okay, next topic. So, so here's a stock that on the calls, we have made more than 200, almost 300%, depending on whether your dollar cost averaged or not. And the stock is now hitting the downtrend line here at 33, 73 it went to, and it's going to go to 42. It will let winter creep in. It is creeping in, and it's going to go to 45. And God help us if it gets bought out. If it does get bought out, you're talking huge percentages on buying 20 cent calls. You guys did see that on my Twitter feed, right? that I put out the, the options charts on a couple of the small caps? Who didn't see it? Who didn't see it? And please don't let me just sit here like a moron waiting for an answer. Who didn't see it? Who saw it? It's not. Who else saw it? Paul, did you see it? I'm going to put you on the hot, uh, hot part right now. Did you see it? Did you see the goose option chart that I put out there at 10 o'clock today? Yeah, I, I see all your. I see all I, your I'm tweets. not asking you. Did you see the goose chart? How much was it up? since last Friday? I don't know. Exactly, because you never saw it. So please don't lie to me. It was up 400 freaking percent. You think these are fake numbers? So please don't tell me that you saw it when you didn't see it. And that applies to everybody. I gotta be tough sometimes, man, seriously. I don't really care, because I made that money. From 20 cents, 40 cents, 60 cents, it goes to two freaking dollars. Today's Wednesday, right? Exactly. So please. None of you saw it. Well, some of you saw it. GameStop. The stock has gone from four. I wasn't there at four. We got in around this level, seven and a half, seven. It is up more than 40%, just the stock itself and going higher. But no, you guys just want to just cling on to the big cap text and then another tweet comes out that we're banning another Chinese companies and your stocks go down. I think I'm making fun. I'm being dead serious. 
Blink. Since the, I mean, I've been asking you guys to buy Blink for a while, but since the middle of September, the stock has gone from 20 cents to 185. Can somebody tell me what percentage that is? Can somebody tell me when you buy a call at 20 cents, like buying a call at two bucks, and then it goes to $18, what percentage return is it? Uh, nine, 9,000, I think. Come on, man. Stop being stupid. 9,000. 900. But you, you're close. At least you got that right. Simon, come on, man. You're smarter than that. Two to, two to 1.8 is 900%. That means your ROI was 800%. Oh, whoops. I saw 18. That's okay. Yeah. No, no. I'm just saying that if a $2 stock goes to it, I understand what you're saying. Initially, it went to 1.6. So let's say you got a 40 cents. Let's say you got an 80 cents. You're still up 100%. And then it pulls back. I told you guys to buy it again. Because Blink was the uh, um, was part of a short attack by a firm. So guys, listen. It's all yours on the take. Want to keep on focusing on the big cap tech? That's totally fine with me, baby. But you got to mix it in with these powerful movers that make your account not just stable, but strong. Now, you don't want to do it. That's fine. I'm not here to change your mind. Remember, real estate trading is not in the business of changing your bias or your style. We're just suggesting and highlighting that there are many ways to make a lot of money in the market, regardless of just the standard market and the indicators and the technical game. Okay. All right. The final thing we're going to look at uh, VIX, and then I'm going to close out. I'm going to start off with uh, the daily VIX, which is flashing a danger sign. I'm telling you right now, right now. Okay, and this jives in with my thesis about the market being up till the first, you know, what did I say, like till the first five, six, seven trading days. It's all there. Um, I'll tell you, the markets will be up till about the 8th, 9th of October, possibly till the 12th of October, if we're lucky. Now, why is this flashing a danger sign? Because the VIX, I, my VIX chart should be put in the Hall of Fame. Why is this flashing a danger sign? Somebody step up and tell me. Somebody the, step, the step up and tell are, me. Stokes are turning up and about to break out of the 45. Stokes, stokes are turning up. Exactly. Do you guys see, who said that? Matt or Simon? Simon. Thank you, Simon. Exactly. Do you guys see what I see? I'm not making this stuff up. The VIX is the ultimate shark derivative. It's a shark when you think the waters in the Caribbean or down in Greece or somewhere in Bali in South Asia where the gorgeous and the real beaches are, right? Not the garbage beaches we deal with here. Right? We use like all oh, swimming and nice. A uh, boom! A shark comes and chops your legs off. Oops, that's actually kind of like mean, right? That's kind of a Donald statement. Now, let me just put it back. And all of a sudden, a jellyfish bites you. Like whatever. Or a squid just like wraps its tentacles around your legs and you're like, oh my God, what's going on? Yes, exactly. The waters are not calm, ladies and gentlemen. They are not calm. Okay? And Simon is dead right. And I hope all of you guys see it. I am seeing it. Look at this. When this starts to go like this, this little red candle is going to shoot up up to 33. It's going to shoot up up to 38. And the markets will be down 800 points. And all your hopes and dreams will be lost in one single day and you'll go from bullish to bearish so fast 
that I'm going to be laughing on the sidelines. And that applies to all of you. The markets and the algorithmic high frequency trading uh, machines, and please listen to what I have to say here, have the power, just like social media, just like technology, have the power to change your emotions within 24 hours. You want them to control your frigging life? I don't think so, but they will control your frigging life because technicals can change so fast, so quick, just the way it did a week, two weeks ago, that the hardest bulls went hard bearish and then they went overall bullish again. Please stay in the middle. Okay. We can be down 800 points, not 800 percent. What the hell stupid thing is that? Okay, 2,000 points within days going into late October. I mean, not late October. I would say late October is going to be fine. I, I think so. What the hell do I know? I'll see. But November. And when these stores turn, and what, two of my screens are dedicated to the V. I X. The slow stochastics are the beasts. When they turn, I want to take profits as quickly as possible. I don't want to be a dogmatic bear. I've never have been since 2009. The last reference point. But I will be a tactical bear. And what's happening with the uh, fast stochastics, the STOC? And anybody who wants to use this platform, DM me. Do their free trial with Quad. It's the ultimate ballers trading charts that you can set up on your own. I have a trading video on that, and I'll help you guys set it up. Just call up Quad. DM me. I'll send the link. Call up Quad and say, I'm with Clueless Trading. They give you, a couple, I think, two weeks worth of free trial, and then you can subscribe to it. I pay like a lot more than other people do, but I think they charge like 140 bucks, whatever. This is the real next advanced level of trading instead of the hope and dreams. And not to put down the, our indicators that we look at, the McClellan, blah, 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 blah. Okay? What's happening on the, on the, on the uh, Fastos? What's happening on the Fastos? Can somebody else tell me? Please, Mr. R.A., stop being quiet and answer a question. What's happening on the Fastos? It's going higher. That's got a stupid ass answer going higher. It's called a positive divergence because the VIX is at the same level and the internals are moving higher or creating a higher low. That's telling me a drop is coming very soon based on my day count and by slightly a couple of days before mid-October. Got it? That's your daily VIX. What about the, uh, the, the uh, this is the VIX today. Did you, uh, who saw my tweet saying that the VIX was going to probably bounce and I put that out and right within 10 minutes of that the market fell anyone saw that I saw it and who's I saw it who are you Ray Pereira exactly they saw that and then the markets fell how much more like perfect can somebody get and why did the VIX rise and why did the markets swap 500 points? We we're only down 180 points. And those talking heads on CNBC and Fox Financial Network and Bloomberg, like, ooh, look at that. You know, markets and blah, 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 blah. Because the fix hit the support level. And I told you guys to scale out some profits and just, you know, and I didn't really care if it pulled back a little bit or not because on the spies, I kept on buying. And I'm going to be rewarded on that tomorrow. Who bought the spies at the close when I told people to buy it? 
Who bought it? Be honest and say it. Come on, guys. I didn't. I bought it. Good. Because the ones who bought it are going to be the cha-ching tomorrow with features up 20. And probably will be up 30. Because Nancy Pelosi and, uh, and Mnuchin, they both look, both look like cartoon characters, by the way. Mnuchin looks like Jerry Lewis. Smartest guy in the world, by the way, I know. Financial-wise, ex-Goldman Sachs guy. And Nancy Pelosi looks like a cartoon lady, right? So they're both like doing cha-cha-cha-cha-cha, dancing. Exactly. However, this VIX is telling us that it can go to 27.44. So, hey, hopefully features stick, stick up here. And because the VIX moved up from the support level, the markets dropped. Forget the noise. Let's say you had no idea about what's happening in the real world. And if you just traded the VIX, I mean, traded, use the VIX as a um, uh, proxy for your trades on the front side. Can somebody tell me what Boeing is doing after hours? Oh, which is one of my best trades. My guy, Dom, has made more money in Boeing than you guys can put together your pennies. Okay? And I think every day he's making like almost four to six thousand bucks in Boeing just in the past week. And he ain't no genius. He's just very smart and he loves my Boeing charts. Who's been trading Boeing? Uh, Anybody else? Uh, please? Yeah. It's up four dollars. Great, because Boeing's going to go to two hundred dollars. Look at my Boeing charts. Look at even Walmart. Who the hell cares about like buying Tesla or Netflix and all Well, I can make so much crap money trading these old name stocks. Boeing itself can drag the market up a thousand points if it goes to 200, which it will. So coming back to the VIX, this is what the VIX looks like on a daily basis. It hits support, it jumps, and the market pulls back. You don't find a reason, and then they'll find a reason. Yes, Pelosi, you know, uh, pissed off, Mnuchin pissed off, Mark Meadows, yeah, growled, Trump tweeted, Biden farted, I'm just kidding. Like, you know, seriously, it doesn't matter. Keep an eye on the VIX, because if the VIX breaks up at 27, we are going, we, it will break up over 27. The VIX will, by the way, get to 30, but it's going to happen after my timeline date on the October initial move going into after the night it will happen now that's your intraday stuff now you want to see what the vix looks like on the uh weekly i showed you the daily the daily is about to go and this crosses over <laughs> you can put your bullishness in your right pocket and sit down all right vix weekly it's dangerous same look as the daily same look as the daily. Remember, that's a gap fill. We could fall into the gap fill before we move higher. In fact, I wanted to. I want to maximize my profits on a bull run, fall into the gap fill at around 21, and go short, short, short. However, the internals are telling me a different story. The internals saying we probably are not going to get to the gap fill. Or maybe 25 or 24.89 is the best we can get to, which itself will be another four or 500 points on the Dow. This is turning. This has a positive divergence. Does that make me like a crazy total bear, like the guys on Stock Twits and all the other great trading services you guys follow? They're all like all or nothing. Like, oh, either the markets are going to Armageddon or we're going to the moon. Bullshit. The markets can move within a trading range. And that's where we make the big money on. And individual stocks that I've highlighted, big cap stocks like Walmart, Boeing, a couple of uh, um, uh, biotechs, and then small cap stocks. We can still make money. You don't have to be all or none like, oh, it's all over. Oh, it's all to the moon. Get out of that mentality, ladies and gentlemen. Please get out of the mentality. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? 
Yes. Exactly. Yep. Look, your parents try to teach you to be a good human being. All of you are parents, obviously, that's why you're on earth. Okay? It took you years to understand what they were trying to teach you. And I'm sure they were great parents. Trading's the same way. I'm not your parent. I ain't your grandma. I'm not your sugar daddy or sugar mommy. I'm just trying to teach you things I've learned over the years. How to keep my mind under full control. My emotions under full control. Even though one, I think I had only one Twitter broadcast, which was truly the bottom of the market, where I said I was actually scared. I was. A little bit. So I'm not here to change your mind. You guys will change your mind. You guys will hit your head, you know, slap yourself like 900 times, and then you're going to make like crap loads of money, get your confidence back, do the right thing. You're going to say, like, yeah, I'm a real trader. A real trader can't say you're a real trader unless you really go through the machinations of volatility. Very few people are real traders. Trust me when I tell you, very few. And I'm talking wealthy traders. They turn into mice, into lemmings, into raccoons, okay? Scared chicken. The minute the markets hit a rough patch, what we call a technical reset. That happened week to 10 days ago. Okay? So yeah, the weekly is also telling me that uh, we are probably going to hit 38. Forget 46. If the elections uh, thing is a real mess, we're going to hit 46. Oh yeah, we're going to hit 50. No question about it. In the meantime, there's your Bollinger Band. And we're almost close to the bottom. On that note, I'm pretty tired, guys. Thank you for being here. God bless you all. Thank you for all the great responses. Stay calm. Stay collected. Great stocks are moving. I missed, I made money on Anthem last week. The stock was up 10 bucks today. Humana was up $19 today. I miss those trades. I miss a lot of trades, but the trades that I don't miss also make a lot of money. Do not get over bullish. If you're going to trade stocks like Tesla, like Roku, you better be fast and quick. If you're going to trade Tesla like Nvidia, like Paul does, stay long term. You want to trade uh, uh, stocks like Boeing, which is the last chart that I'm going to show, swing it, day trade it if you want, if it when it moves higher. That's a company which has a long way to go in my opinion i literally speaking it has a long flight path okay so but you're gonna play like high beta high momentum stocks you better be on your game baby all right you better be on your game in a big way because that ain't for kids i'll tell you that right now so boeing 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 and there's so many other great stocks in the market so ask me a question while I'm trying to put up uh, pull up Boeing's chart. Quick. Nobody? Everyone's like scared to ask me a question? Okay, that's great. Okay. No questions, anyone? Okay. It's a good point. And I've shown many charts in Boeing. Short term, somewhat overbought. And that's why it hit 170. 170 is like a kind of a short term floor. Look at the slow stochastics. Look, it's still moving high. It has to get overbought like it did here when we played that stock from 143 to 233. That was back in June, in May and June. It has to get really overbought. What's really overbought? I would say 182 to 195. How much FU money can you make with Boeing going up? Forget about these, these numbers up here. It's going to eventually get there. Eventually. Okay? And I'm not talking years. I'm talking maybe a couple of months. So what's the hesitation with some of you or many of you to play Boeing. Buy some October, November calls. 
stock is going to get to 180. And that's why Dom, who is just kind of a Boeing fanatic, because he's why what is it why does a person get so involved with a particular stock? Can somebody tell me? Because they're traders. Because they made money on it. Exactly. Thank you. They made money on it. You know. It's like a girlfriend or boyfriend you had that you still remember. You're like, wow. Exactly. They made money on it. He's lost money on it too. But he's focused on the charts and he made a lot more on it. So yeah, 180, 196. Now, if it does go to 180, 196, which is the last uh, uh, big sell uh, point, that means the markets are a lot higher too. The, those 600 point moves in the market, that's when Boeing goes to 180 to 195. That's all I got to say, ladies and gentlemen. I love you all. Have a great evening. Let's make money. Futures are up 19 points. We're going to, people who bought at the lows today after selling on the high end with a bunch of stocks that we took profits on are going to be very happy. Be a tactical trader, not a hopeful dreamer. God bless you all. Good night. Thanks, Frank.